Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robot Law Miles Australia. Um, today I'm going to do a quick setup of the Ecovacs uh, G1 Goat. Um, this is the very first time that I've actually set one up. Um, I'm not going to do anything preemptive on this. I'm just going to download the app, run through the instructions. Uh, the same as what you'll do at home. Um, and this is the first time I've ever set one up. So hopefully it all goes smoothly and we'll, um, we'll sort of see exactly how how easily and how intuitive the app is and how it is to set it up. And, um, the Ecovacs, obviously Ecovacs themselves are a very well-known company. Um, uh, been in the sort of you know, robotic vacuum cleaner and robotic space for a long, long, long time. Um, but they've brought out this G1 uh, Goat. Uh, it's been released over in Europe, uh, yet to be released here in Australia, hopefully late this year maybe. Um, the biggest difference with this one is that it is a wireless machine, um, but it operates off these little receiver stations here, um, stakes that go around the, around the garden um, that allows it to actually triangulate its position and it can actually you know, find uh, position itself within, a, within one or two centimetres uh, without using GPS RTK like some of the other technology that's out there. So, so this robot basically uses all cameras on it. So it's got a, uh, it's got a fisheye camera on the top. Um, it's got another camera in the front uh, as well as other sensors there to actually identify what's in front of it and how it gets around. Um, and it's got a very large base station, you see to, the, to, to my left here, your right, um, where it actually comes in and they, the base station has mechanical brushes in it that actually clean the cameras when it actually comes home, uh, as well as charging it. So we'll test all these things out and we'll see how they all go. Um, I'll just do a test, just going to do a, a, literally just a quick setup uh, today with, the, with this video. And then uh, later on, after a week or two, uh, I'll come back and do another video of how I found the actual robot working in the yard. Um, this yard that we're in is, is only a very small yard. It's only about sort of 10 metres by 10 metres, not if about eight, nine metres by nine metres, I think it is. Um, so it's less than 100 square metres. I'll, uh, I'll put the camera back out so you can see the, uh, see the entire yard and uh, I'll just go through and we'll try and do this all in one take um, and see how we go. Okay, so the first thing uh, is that uh, they do give you this quick start guide here, uh, which is really quite good. It tells you how to get out of the box, how to put the base station together, uh, where you should put the base station. So you've got there sort of the base station needs to have two meters on, on each side of it and the front, uh, where you want to locate the base station. Um, so you can put the base station down. Um, it gives you a, a QR code to download the app, which I've already done. Um, and it tells you that you scan. Uh, once you've got your QR code, um, you can scan the back of the robot there or under the cover there. So. Let's uh, see how we go. We'll go put the base station in. We'll see what happens. Okay. So we'll take a couple of pegs, with our extension cable here, and we might just put the base station sort of in clear view over here. So you can actually see where it is. Here somewhere. First thing we'll do is put the extension cable in so I can push it right back against the wall. Oh, we even got the right end. How good is that? Now we can push that right back against the wall. Now I'm only going to put just two screws in here for now, um, just to keep it in position. Don't worry about there is six screws that can go they can go, actually there's eight screws sorry there's two more at the back wind those in by hand as far as we can no look i can get them all the way my, my ground is really quite soft so we'll get those all the way down we'll run the extension lead back down the back here just very roughly for now okay we'll grab the power supply Come up around the back of the camera here and plug it into the power point. I won't turn it on just yet because it hasn't told me to do so, but I will have it all sitting plugged in just ready to turn the switch on. Okay, okay, that's ready, ready and raring to go. Now let's see what the uh, let's see what the app says. So I'll open up open up the app, which is the Ecovacs Home app. 
and we'll go in here and simply add a device. Comes up with a skewer with us with a scan. We come in underneath the robot. Here's the QR code up the top there. We scan the QR code, which is probably most likely just the, just the, uh, the serial number of the machine. Press and hold the power button for two seconds. Press one, two. Oh, look, it turns on. I've switched on the robot. We'll just wait for that to fire up properly. It's just, just loading at the moment. It just says Ecovacs on the screen. Um, it's not going any further, so I'll press next. Prepare your goat. Set the language display Please on your goat. Oh, robot. it's talking to Please us. Set the language and four -digit pin code. Oh, look at that. So it asks us to set the language. Oh. Okay, so we're going to set it to English. Um, and let's just set the park the code to four zeros. We've gone along to the end of that. And we say all set. Doesn't say to hit OK. Oh, yeah, hit OK, yep. It says too simple. Please reset. OK. Do that. Oh, that's resetting the pin code. I don't want to reset the pin code. Oh, the, the, the pin code is too simple. That's what it's trying to tell me. It's saying too simple, please reset. It's saying that four zeros is not complicated enough and you need to have more than that. So let's go the old one, 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 one. It'll be easiest to enter into it. Yeah, and it asks to confirm that code. One, 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 and we're okay. Pin code okay. Now on the screen on here it says all set, so I click the all set button and I'll click next. Okay, so it's got in here, the following devices are found, tap to start pairing. So we'll tap that to start pairing. I'll put in the verification code that we've just put in, so four, four ones for me. Uh, Bluetooth connected, your Bluetooth paired goat uh, remote control, connect to Wi-Fi. Yes, what I'm going to first do, I need to turn my Wi-Fi on here. I had it turned off recent before. Okay, so we're going to connect to Wi-Fi. Yes, we want it to Unify. Okay, it's connected to the Wi-Fi. Press Next. Connect to the connecting the robot to your phone. Please do not send the app to the background. Set up complete. Let's name our goat. We're going to call him Goat. Goat demo. We'll call it. Okay, continue. Okay, time zone. That's correct for us here. That's all okay. Enter. Coming up with a pop up that's not displaying. We'll just close that one. Okay, it's telling us welcome. Place your accessories flat on the ground. Okay, we've already jumped the gun a little bit here, I'd say. But that's okay. So we go all set. And we go to the next. It's saying assemble the base station. Yes, we've already done that. Um, and also plugged in that plug there at the back there that I didn't show you guys earlier, but there is a plug in the back there between the base station uh, base and the actual base station itself. So we have done all that. That's okay. Oh, it's one of these ones that has to has to play through the video before it's going to allow us to move on, I think. Here we go, all set, yep, we've done that. Yep, we've done that. Uh, install the station. Place the station at a location with a strong network signal in the yard. You refer to the Wi-Fi signal on your mobile phone. Yes, we've done that. Place the station on flat ground with an open view Make sure there is no obstacles within two meters of the station. Yes, we've pretty much done that. Let's have a click there. Well, there's a little bit of an obstacle to the right there, isn't there? <laughs> with the uh, with the plants there. We'll see how that goes. Let's, uh, let's push the limits just a little bit. Um, make sure the grass is less than six millimeter, six centimeters. Well, that's not a problem here at the moment because the uh, the uh, works landroid keeps my yard here perfect, and it's the middle of winter here at the moment, so there is no grass to grow really. <laughs> Okay, we're going to fix the base station down. Well, we've done that, not quite with eight screws, but we've done two, so that's, you know, that's fine for this test. 
Okay, we go installed. Now it's talking about the beacons. We're going to add beacons. Unscrew the beacon, remove the protective material inside the beacon, then install three dry cells. So something that I was already aware of is that with these beacons, with the beacons, I'll bring this a bit closer so you can sort of see. So they just lock into place like such and then pull apart. So that's just the base that screws in. There's nothing in this whatsoever. Although there is enough space in there to keep, to, to store extra batteries if you were to wrap them up. So you could put some extra batteries in there if you wish to. But inside this section here, which is the actual beacon itself, you unscrew the section here. And inside there is a piece of foam. And that's what's stopping the battery connection uh, at the moment. And all the batteries are actually already pre-installed, ready to go. So there's three D three D sized batteries uh, in here and they supply you with alkaline batteries. So I'm not sure how long they'll last, but I'll let you know when they go flat. And we screw that back down again. Oh yeah, and it beeps. It's got a little bit of a beep. There's no light on it, I don't think, at all. No, there's no light on it whatsoever. But there is a 2D matrix uh, for scanning, which I believe is what it's, the app's going to ask us for. Okay. Okay, so that's that one. Unscrew the bacon, remove protection material inside the bacon, and then install three dry cells. Do we do this for all of them, or do we do this for just, just one at a time? Let's do it for all of them. Actually, no, I don't need to take that off there. I've just got to take this off here. Take that off there. Take out the protective material. Screw it back down again. And it should beep. And it did. Okay. Okay, so we've done that for both our beacons. Okay, next. Screw the beacon until you hear a beeping sound. Yes, we've done that. Keep jumping ahead, don't we? Uh, connect it back to the base pod there and connect and slide it, turn it around until it goes to the lock position. Yes, we've done that as well. And then we're going to lift up the Goak's antenna and see, we've already done that before because I did that when I took it out of the box. So that's okay. Okay, we go add beacon. Okay, at least two navigation beacons. Okay, so we've got to scan one. Let's scan this one here. 2D matrix. Added. Oh, okay. The robot tells me that it's been added. Says failed to add. Has been added. I oh, do not. Oh, I scanned it twice, did I? Okay. Okay, so let's just. That, that's the first one we scanned, so let's scan the next one then. Okay, so that's two. Comes up to, down the bottom, and now it says added uh, to install two, and allows me to push there. Now you also notice at the top of the screen there, there is an input uh, pass key. So you obviously can do it without scanning the code as well, and just by entering in the code, uh, which is only about, looks like it's eight digits, uh, or eight uh, letters and numbers. So we go added two. Okay, now it's telling us where to put them. Okay, so we've only got a single yard, so we're going to put them on the side here. Now, this is something that's worth just you know talking a little bit about, is that basically the robot appears that it, you know, we need to test this thoroughly, obviously, but it looks like the robot needs to see two of these at any given time, and it looks like it probably needs to be a direct line of sight. Um, so getting two of these installed in a simple yard, you only need just two opposite. In an L-shaped yard, you could probably still almost get away with it. So in that L-shaped yard there, I think you could probably still get away with two just. Um, but it obviously recommends that you have three, and then in a U-shaped yard, um, you're going to need four, and obviously a square yard with a house in the middle, um, you're going to need four as well. But basically, I think it looks like the rule of thumb is that you need you need these guys to be able to see two beacons at any given time. Okay, so all navigation beacons have been installed, so it's telling us to actually install them. Okay, it's not telling us which one to install where, but that's okay. So we're going to install one just under the camera in front of you there. So you can see everything out this side here. I'm gonna put it in the garden, so it's not on the lawn. It's actually in the garden itself. The screws are really quite good on these. I'll show you on the screen again in a second. Once you screw these down, 
these uh, these nylon screws here, they really do a great job. They, they really do go down really firm. We'll come across here and we'll put this other one in the garden here. So you can do that, yep. You really can do them up very tight, and that's actually quite firm, it really is. Okay, so that's our two beacons installed. We'll just go, all beacons have been installed, and we'll go install. Okay, so the robot says, beacon signal detected, please wait. It's going to do its thing. We'll see what it's telling it. Signal strength strong, goat preparing. Well, that's good. Okay, it's telling us to take the uh, take the, uh, the camera cap off, which we've done. Place the goat back into the bake station and make sure the battery reaches 50%. Oh, well, this could be a bit of a pause in the video, if it's not. Let's, um, let's see. Let's... <laughs> it does like to talk to you, this thing, that's for sure. So let's put it in here. So the one good thing here as well, I just noticed, is that you can still open the cover here and get to the screen while it's on the base station, which is quite good. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's asking me to put the pin code in here. I'm just going to do that to see what it actually says. So the screen, I'll just get my phone and, uh, and show you what this says. Because we don't know if the battery is 50% or not. It's just going to go into... We're going to my camera, so you can see what I'm looking at. So it actually just sort of says that it's got the time. The battery indicator looks like it's full, which is great. Um, and the Wi-Fi signal there is on. Uh, please use flip, please use app to map. Okay. So it's basically it's just telling me to, to proceed uh, how we were before. So we go back to the Ecovacs Goat. So make sure it's 50%. Yes, we've done that. And click on mapping. Okay, so it's detecting the beacon signal again. And it's on the dock. It's 50%. Sensor is normal. Panoramic camera has cover remove. Pin code has been entered. Goat is docked with station. Well, ah, oh, because it's not turned on, everyone. Let's turn it on. That's going to make a rather large difference, we're going to think, isn't it? Okay. So it says it's charging. There's a blue light on the uh, on the base station now, and it's flashing a, a light blue. Let's go re-detect here again. And let's see what it says this time. That makes a lot of sense. If you don't turn it on, people, it won't work. Oh, we've got all, all big green ticks. Okay. Get ready for virtual boundary creation. Check whether the outdoor light is sufficient. I think we're pretty good today. Uh, check whether it uh, is rain outside. No, it's not raining. We're okay. Um, it goes through to say if it's dark, rainy, foggy, errors may occur. So it needs to be able to see what it's doing, particularly when you're mapping it, obviously, and it wants to record a good map. Uh, once started, goat will automatically exit from the station. Press start. Bluetooth connection, please connect. Okay. Okay, so now it's, it's, it's switched over to a uh, to, to a Bluetooth connection. The robot's reversing off the base station. We might be in luck here. We're doing okay so far. Okay, virtual boundary. So it's showing on the map there to go clockwise around. Um, a lot of these robots do have different ways of going around. It doesn't tell you to go clockwise, does it? It just says go in a circle. Uh, swipe to review other information. Oh, I've got to go down right here. So control the goat to the place 0.5 meters right in front of the base station. Okay, well that's roughly where it is. That's okay. If the height difference between the target area and the edge is more than three centimeters high, so this is the height of the scroll up there, so you can see. So if it's more than three centimeters high, it doesn't want the, the wheels and things to go over the over the edge. Um, I think three centimeters is quite generous for a small robot. That's quite good. Um, so it's basically saying you want to stay you know, 10 centimeters away from any edge um, or, or any drop. 
um, create a channel with more than one meter. Create a channel with a width more than one meter. So it's sort of saying that the, the width needs to be a meter wide for it to operate. So that's going to cause some small limitations, but that's not too bad. Uh, do not move goat during mapping. That sort of makes a lot of sense. And we're going to say that we've learned all that. Okay. Goat should return to the starting point. Please use the joystick to control. Tap anywhere on the screen to exit. Okay. Can we do it this way? Has it got to start? This guy wants to say in portrait. That's very different for actually for the robots because usually there are, they usually would always be uh, in. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Here we go. I'm going to go right in there a little bit. Try to come in here. We're going to go past our very trustworthy works landroid. Well, it's not. It's not terrible to to uh, to con to control. Yeah, we're gonna go right in here a bit. Oh, let's, let's take a let's certainly take a little bit of learning to do it with just a single a single keypad. I do like that it's showing the map as we go on the screen, which I really find that's being almost a necessity for for these types of machines. I'm finding it a little bit difficult to keep it to go, keeping it to go dead straight is not actually that easy. Hmm. I'm sure with a, bit of, oh, with a bit of practice it won't be too bad, but you can see my line there is not very straight. Now on this side here, I'm going to take it pretty well right onto the concrete here. So we make sure that we cut all the way up to the edge. It really is not easy to control at all. Definitely rather have two toggles so that you can push one forward and steer with the other. Well, <laughs> we really are a bit drunk. Okay, sort of getting a sort of, sort of got to just rock your thumb sort of left and right over the. Uh, over the toggle seems to be all right. I'll we'll take this nice and close, but not up on the edge on this one, so we can get around this post. It is only about two centimeters step up there. Now I just missed that pot plant by about three centimeters, so we'll see how close it goes when it, when it mows. Oh, we really are drunk. That's all right. Come on. Yeah, definitely two toggles is. Definitely the way you know, to control these robots when you're remote controlling them. Having a single point is really not great. I'm going to try and run this. Oh, it really is not very easy. I'm going to try and run this with its wheel up on the concrete edge here. At least very close. Oh, a little bit wavy there. I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, my concentration level here is quite high. <laughs> so if you're trying to do this really perfectly in your yard, it's, you're going to have to dedicate a little bit of time. But again, if you once you get once you get the use of this toggle, it's not as terrible as it first was. And I said if you just sort of keep your thumb on it and just sort of rock your thumb, sort of back. Basically it's saying it's done. It's now telling us to put it in front of the base station and then tell it to recharge. So I'll point it towards the base station, like such. A bit of an angle too, so we'll give it a bit of a test here. It's not really, it's not lined up straight at all. It's actually on quite an angle. And we'll say recharge. The goat to place 0.5 in front of the base station. Yep, we've done that. Back to station. Back to station. Let's see what it does. No, I think it might have, it might have identified that it's not lined up. Yeah, look, that's quite good. It, it knew straight away that it wasn't it wasn't lined up straight with the station. It straightened itself up. And it's going to dock itself in rather carefully and precise, which is great. It is absolutely completely dead center here at the moment. I think it's spot on. 
Okay, and it's charging. Okay, now it's asking if we want to do a no-go zone. Now, we won't do that for now, but I'll test that later on in the week there where we can put a no-go zone in the um, in the center of the area, which is for, yeah, for a, a path or you know, a garden bed or whatever it might be in the middle, or a trampoline, for instance. And if you haven't noticed already the dead massive dead patch on my lawn, that is from a trampoline um, that I very carelessly put there all over summer and then moved it at the start of winter. So we managed to kill all the grass uh, and then basically the winter's come along and we've got no no real sun or heat to uh, to get the grass to, to, uh, to go back. Okay, so set no entry zone or skip. So we're going to skip that. Okay, so now it's telling us to say map learning goat is locating obstacles to optimize the map. Through map learning, please wait. How long do we have to wait? We have to wait this very too long. I'll have to uh, I'll have to time lapse this so you don't not staring just watching me standing in the middle of the lawn and looking at a map. You can see on the top of the screen there it's currently ten eighteen in the morning. So if you see that jump to uh, to half past ten or something, you'll know why I fast forwarded it. Oh, okay. No, I just you had to press the you had to press the start map learning to actually uh, to to actually send it out to do what it needs to do. So it didn't really tell me to do that. It just told me that it was learning. I might stand out of its way this time because I don't want it thinking I'm an obstacle. So you can see there, it's actually just going out and scanning the grass, basically looking for obstacles. That's quite quite impressive, really, isn't it? Hmm. I was going to see that, that tree there. There's a little bit of a branch overhanging the garden there, right in front of the camera. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it didn't actually, it didn't show it on the map here, so it appears to not have picked it up. And what about that little bit over the far corner over there you haven't made go green yet? Hmm. What just do there, no wonder. I was just going back to where it's where it was pick, where it started mapping. Okay, so it's going to do it in systematic patterns, sort of maybe a, a meter or two apart, which means a very large lawn. It could it could take some significant time to do this on a large lawn. Okay, it's going right through this time. It still missed that patch there. So I wonder if it's going to come back and pick up these other patches that it's missed. That's quite a decent hole there. There's a, there's a drain where it just turned there at the second there. It does get other rabbit lawnmowers quite stuck at times. Right. 
oh, it just decided that those corners just were automatically done. So it just decided not to test those little corners. It basically, basically must have just thought that that was irrelevant and that it didn't need to do it, which is sort of okay. Not ideal, but okay. It's saying we only have 49 square metres of, of lawn here. Um, and I do think I've measured this at about 75, I think it is all up. So I'm, I am finding with just about all the uh, self-mapping uh, robots and wireless robots that their, their calculations on the, on the square meterage is, seems to always be low uh, to what it normally would be. Okay, so the robot's back charging, saying congratulations, map learned and complete, fantastic. Now it's asking, well, we'll step through the schedule just so you can see how it works. Um, so let's go use schedule. Uh, it's recommended to keep the grass under 10 centimetres, we saw, okay, fallen fruits, all that sort of stuff. Uh, thanks to the kookaburras to give us a little song. Mm. All right, I'm not sure what it's trying to tell us to do here. Just can I do here? Okay, all right. Oh, okay, so it's telling us we go across this way. So we've got auto. Oh, okay, so we can put the we can put the robot in auto or manual mode. We go across here to schedule. We click on schedule, and I think it's going to give us a schedule and tells us how to do this. So it gives us our days and weeks and times mowing the lawn. Okay, schedule one. So it looks like you get more than looks like you get more than one schedule if you want to. You can do more schedules. So this is turned on. Um, mowing task, it's currently Sunday, so let's go into Sunday, is that right? Yes. Does it tell us that Sunday now? Oh yep, on there it says Sunday. We can say, oh yeah, it's got, it's got the button there to synchronise to all days, which I do find that to be really fantastic for most things. So mowing hours, we can put this in here, and it's currently 10.23. Um, so let's just go to 10.30. Like such, and we go save. Got it. Oh, it conflicts. Oh, 10. Sorry. We need to say 10.30, don't we? Not just 0.30. Save. So 10. I'm saying 10 to 10.30. I don't want it from 10 to, oh, 10 to 10.30. That's right. Okay. Because it shouldn't take very long to do. And then we can hit this button here and we'll sync to all days. And it gives you a warning to say that it's going to replace everything. And then every single day has been replaced at the same time. That's really good. Hit save. Had a little ding from the from the robot just then as well to tell me that that schedule has been saved and we can go in here and we can turn this off. And we can also rename it. So we can say this is our, um, we'll call this our 30 minute schedule. All days, 30 minutes. We'll just go 30 minutes every day. I think there's a certain amount of characters in there, so go in there. Okay, and again we get a ding from the robot again to tell us that it's been saved. So that's great. So does that mean it's just going to operate like that now if we go back out of that? So this is the home screen. It just says the Goat Deno standard mode Bluetooth mode. Okay. If we go into it, Bluetooth mode. So I just, went, I just went back one screen too many just then, so I'm just going to reconnect via Bluetooth as it appears. This is taking a little bit longer than I would have thought. Usually the Bluetooth connections do connect rather quickly, but I must have been, I do have a lot. Oh, search again. Hmm. It says it's out of range. It can't be out of range. Try that one more time. This might have something to do with it being connected through Wi-Fi, not allowing us to do it. I'm really not sure. This could be our first little hurdle of not knowing what it is we're doing. I'll wait for this to time out and then I'll cancel it and we'll go back to a standard view. Okay. So we'll cancel out of that and we'll go standard mode connection. 
and it's come up. So this is obviously, I assume, through the Wi-Fi. So we now have it in auto mode. We have a schedule set. What I'd like to do, so we've got, this is the camera mode. We activate function surroundings. Never show this again. So this is viewing through the camera. Quality really is quite poor, but it's you know I don't have a I don't have a problem with that. You go there and just go to turn the station. Station. This screen. Well, that's another one too. You can actually so you can actually speak through the robot as well and listen. So it really is great. I think that's a great feature. But let's get back to it being a robot. Um, so there's a map icon at the top there which allows us to optimize map, uh, map display more. So I, I don't think at this point, I don't think you can modify the map at this point in time. I think you can only start a new map. So I don't think you can actually edge auto. There's a little app there, it's in the way. So the other thing we can look at um, is this auto manual. So when you hit this auto button down the bottom here, it comes in either edge and manual mode. So if I hit edge, I believe it's gonna go into a boundary. So we'll see how close it gets to the boundary. New obstacles on the boundary may cause the goat to get stuck. Please clear the obstacles on the boundary first. Let's just go never show that again. because I don't wanna know that. And start. Let's see how close to the map that I drew it actually runs. Select the boundary edge for mowing. Select the boundary for edge mowing, overlap or adjacent boundary are trimmed together by default. Just, I want you to start, select the boundary edge for mowing before that will start. So we do, we've got to select the edge apparently, or something like that. Ah, there we go. We've got to press that little that little button there at the top there. Select that and press start. Camera cleaning. Okay, it's doing a, it's doing a camera clean. Ah, there we go. That's really great. So it's. I'm not sure if you can hear that properly, but the brushes are just going back and forward over the fisheye camera and probably over the front camera as well. That's sort of cool. I don't know how reliable this sort of system is going to be over a long period of time, but I guess we'll find out over time. 
Uh, I'm sure the lenses and things of like that will be replaceable um, if they do need to be replaced. So let's see how close to the edge this guy gets. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what height I've got the blade set here at the moment. I think we might have a bit of a look in a second. See if I can do it. See if I can do it now. If I open this, does it stop? No, it does not. Now let's wind that down to about 35 millimeters. There we go. Even one lower. There we go. So it turns out you can uh, you can open up the top guard while it's travelling, and you can adjust the blades while it's travelling. Oh my gosh, it's uh, it is really quite a way off the edge there. Let me put it into camera so you can see. Mm. So that really is. Oh, it's gone around. It's, it's, it's gone around this, uh, this this branch here. That's actually what's happened there. And see, it saw the chair leg. Let's see if it goes around. See if it steps up on the concrete here now or not. No, it is a long way over. It's almost the entire width of the robot over from where it was. So I do hope it gets better over time. That side's sort of not too bad. I was going out of there now again. And if you call that I mapped it within three centimeters of this pot. Hmm. And all the way down this edge, all the way down this edge here, um, we had it with one wheel on the concrete. So, look, I don't know whether, the, whether it's going to get better over time, so I'll, uh, again, we'll, uh, we'll run this for a couple of weeks and we'll sort of see how it goes. It's, it's getting a little bit closer there, but still not as close as where I mapped it. It's almost as drunk as it was when I mapped it. So maybe that's, again, maybe that's a little bit to do with me. But I wouldn't exactly call that a very successful border cut at this point of time. We've just touched the wall there. So the accuracy sort of seems to be you know, somewhere more like you know, 10 centimeters in that sort of ballpark, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it, how it goes over time. We'll set it out for a mow in a second, uh, let it mow, and uh, have a quick chat to you, and we'll call it a video. So I believe it's finished. Uh, just in that last little bit. Was it going to do? Was it going to do two borders? I think it might be going back to see if we could, see if we could get that border that it missed there. Yeah, I do believe it went back to that border there to see if we could get back to it because that that branch is too low to the ground and the camera saw that, so it avoided uh, that little area. And then after it was finished doing its lap, which it finished over here, it actually went, continued around to that point there uh, to see if it could actually uh, get in there. So now I've got the camera up, I'll show you this, uh, how it docks. It really is quite precise in the docking, that's for sure. Very, very cautious, it goes in nice and slow. But, uh, it's going a lot further to the left this time, but no, that's okay. So it really does doxing quite nicely. Okay, let's go back to the uh, Ecovax app. Mowing complete. Turn on station keeper to guard. To guard it. Okay, well let's let's enable. We'll enable the guard keeper, which means which means now it should be possibly going to notify me if something moves past. The, ro the, uh, the robot, and we'll see what happens. Basically, it's working a little bit like a uh, like a security camera that it may it may notify me. Someone entered the protection range. View the gallery details. So we click on there, and it's going to come up, and it's going to show me that this crazy creature here uh, walked past it. Now, it's very much a dark shadow, but it's still an image that still told you that, uh, that there was movement in your yard, so I think that's quite good. I'm not sure how sensitive that's going to be. We're, again, we'll see over time whether, uh, whether, a, um, whether a sparrow or something in the backyard sets it off, um, but we'll see how that happens. Okay, now we'll run it into manual mode. 
and we're going to just enter manual mode which means Bluetooth disconnected try again now let's connect so in manual mode it might be a you might you may be able to remote control it which is maybe why it requires a Bluetooth connection because I haven't seen anything here that just allows you to press the start button and make it actually run. Now, being that our Bluetooth hasn't been very successful, Bluetooth turned on, and the Bluetooth connection hasn't been very successful so far, hopefully it uh, connects. We'll stay nice and close. Bluetooth pairing timed out. Okay, so it's sort of says it's already paired. Display symbol indicates the goat is already paired. Where is our display symbols on our connections? It doesn't seem to have them. They seem to be in this section here. Let's go to settings here for a second. Delicate and efficient. Rain sensors on. Let's just turn the rain sensor off. Animal protection. If the, protect, if the protection time is reached while mowing, Okay, oh, that's, that's a night time, okay, so you can, you can set it up so it doesn't run at night time for, for a long period of time, which is great for, for small animals and things if you have them on your property. Um, station keeper, go will detect people within seven meters of the station and give you a warning, which is what it just did before. Edge, the goat will mow the edges in the zone by default. Okay, so you can turn the edge mow off, and then you've got obstacle avoidance, flat ground with short grass, which is going to make it obviously very sensitive and then general environment, so you can make it more sensitive or less sensitive to, to its obstacle avoidance, which again, I think that's probably a good feature for a lot of yards. Um, AI recognition will be formed on dogs. Oh, okay, so we can we can allow it to actually do recognition, so I think we'll turn that on just to help to help them out. Get there. Probably means that a lot of the um, your camera vision, that will actually be sent back uh, to them to actually be able to identify what things are. Um, and safer mode. Blades will stop when a human is detected near the machine. I'm going to turn that on and see how that works. More settings. Oh, navigation beacons, logs, signal. Oh, there's a signal the whole thing. Oh, that's quite clever. There's, at least it tells you what it's got. Um, so we've got, you know, medium signal across our entire yard. How do you, how do you get good signal? Because you'd think that some of this would have to be good. And it lists out the two beacons below there. Um, log gives you the actual log times of what it's been doing, which is quite good. Edge mo. I think went in there and tells you what it edged, how much it edged, how long it took. That's not terrible. Um, accessories and parts. Okay, so counts down times um, for your camera brush. Blades, so yeah, so everything that needs to be replaced on it, it's got a countdown timer on the blades and the brushes. Um, tells you the status of your cells and your, your batteries in the beacons. I think that's quite, quite clever. Well, that's the 4G module. Okay, so that's actually a separate module. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. So it looks like you, the robot does not have 4G in it automatically. Um, it has a separate module that you purchase to uh, to get the 4G connected. I was not aware of that. Um, connection, so Bluetooth is unconnected. Why is Bluetooth unconnected? I don't understand. Oh, it's telling me I was another one. Someone's sending me another alert that someone's close to the robot. Not sure why we're having trouble with the uh, with the Wi-Fi with the, sorry with the Bluetooth, but I'll get into that over time. Um, safety settings, which is sort of where we were before. Mower lifted, alarm once activated. Okay, so there is actually an alarm for the robot. If it gets lifted, there's an alarm, and if it goes outside the map, there's an alarm. So, do you want to hear the alarm? Let's let's hear the alarm. Okay? We'll change it to mower lifted, and then we're going to lift it. Let's see what happens. See, allowed the. Please enter the guarding area. Please enter the guarding area. Off the floor. Attention to the goat signal receiver and top camera. 
though it does like to talk. Oh, there it is. Okay, so, oh, and it, I was about to say it turned off, but no, it didn't. So, you can hear it. It's very obviously not very loud. It's not really going to upset your neighbours or anything. Um, and then it asks you to put the pin code in to, uh, to get rid of it. And then, of course, it shuts down, so that wasn't really much of a problem. Um, I'll just hit the home button on here and we'll see if that... There we go. So I can hit the home button on the, on the robot and send it home. No problems at all. Relocation failed. Please try again. Hmm, he it thinks it's lost right now. I'm going to turn the mower lifted alarm off because we don't really have that again. But there is a map that has got the alarm for when it gets carried outside of its area, so that's quite good. Quite good indeed. Square meters, help, product improvement program, feedback, and goat information. This is all of our serial numbers. Our firmware, um, which I assume is up to date. We haven't actually checked that. We don't have automatic updates turned on. Um, you already have the latest version. So we have the latest version here at the moment. And that's all the settings inside the goat. So the one thing we haven't been able to do is start it manually because we don't have a Bluetooth connection. So I may just have to sort of shut things down. I do have, honestly, I have hundreds of robots connected to my app uh, in Bluetooth. Um, so I do have a lot of issues with my phone uh, and Bluetooth connecting to robots. So it's most likely something to do with that. Um, the robot itself, we should be able to go in here then and just press the play button, surely. Like such. Press play, then OK. Hmm. I think it wants to be more than one. It's basically saying it needs to be 1.5 meters from the edge before we press buttons. So I think it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit sensitive to the, being started on the edge when it's not in the base station. Let's do that. We'll press. We'll just. I'm going to try home again. So when I press home, because I've already already told it to start mowing, it actually says that it, it gives you the option to pause the task and return home, or end the task and return home. So that's a very handy feature if you've got a large area. If, it's, uh, if this guy is actually rated at 1,600 square meters, remember. So if you've got a large area. Um, and you want to send it home, but you don't want to cancel the mowing session because you really don't want it to go back to the start, uh, then that really is quite good. So we're just going to leave that as return home. Okay. Okay, I think it's happy again now. Okay, so it's going to go back. Going to go back home, and then we'll send it out for a mow, and then we'll end the video after that. <laughs> Not sure how long we've been going for. None of my videos are short, are they? But that's okay. Mm. Okay, so it's back to there. Now on the app here, you can see that it actually has a end or continue button now. So I can should be able to press continue and hopefully it should go out and mow. Here is these cameras doing its thing. So you see the camera getting cleaned. It's quite, it really is quite good. So let's go back out of here. We'll get out of the robot's way again, and we'll let it do its thing. It might do a, it might do a perimeter lap again before it actually starts mowing. Blade disc running. Blade disc running. Okay, that's good. All right. Let's see what it does. All right. So it's leaving a 
a trail behind it telling you where it's mowed, which I think that's quite good. We're not going to be able to see in this, in this uh, test how well it's actually mowing because the grass just isn't growing anywhere near enough to be able to run that kind of test. But we should be able to at least see how well it, uh, it performs and uh, how well it seems to cover the map. So it's starting from the middle and working its way back towards me at the moment. So we'll see how that goes. And I might uh, let this do its, ma do its map. I'll speed this film up for you so you don't have to sit here and watch it do its whole thing. And then we'll uh, come back and uh, we'll uh, have a quick chat afterwards and then, uh, then we'll end the video. Okay, so he's finished his mow, um, really probably did a pretty damn good job to tell you the truth, he really didn't do bad at all. Um, hopefully we can see here if we go into the logs, we might be able to actually see the, uh, the time it took to actually do that mow. Going to here, down to the bottom was it more settings, into the log files here. It took 31 minutes to mow this lawn, so look, obviously that's still a lot faster than the random uh, robotic mowers. Um, you know, for instance, the Works Landroid that I actually have here on this lawn all the time, it takes about two hours to mow this lawn, so it's about four times more efficient uh, than doing that. Uh, with the 22 centimetre cut, uh, 22 centimetre wide uh, blade on the, uh, on the Ecovax, um, it's reasonably efficient how it goes. It does travel quite slow. So if you did have a very large lawn, obviously it's still going to take a long time to mow the lawn, but it is going to mow it. Um, I think the couple of things that I really picked up on while I was uh, while we were watching uh, that mowing session was that essentially for, for a start, this little area here, and I'll just take a, take a camera shot there so you can see it. Um, so that, that plant there overlapping the edge of the garden there, that definitely caused quite a bit of grief for it. Um, it had to keep quite a wide berth around that uh, because obviously it's still seeing uh, or the camera vision uh, when it's actually mowing. So if there's anything in its way, whether that's on the edge of the lawn or not, it will still avoid it. Um, the edges definitely kept a fair way away from the edges, even though that, so I did a, did a perimeter cut at the end uh, there as well. Um, so it definitely it stayed quite a way away uh, from the edges on that perimeter cut. Um, I think that probably comes down to how you map the, uh, map the robot. I think you do want to map it very close to the edge and then the robot is still going to stay a little bit away from the edge anyway. Uh, particularly when it was down on this edge down the side here, um, it never actually got really actually completely close to that edge there. So you'd probably map, you'd probably map this with the robot you know, fully on the concrete to, uh, to make sure it picks up that edge. Um, uh, something else I put on the camera here as well, uh, something I thought was quite, uh, quite great until it, until it wasn't, was, uh, was this stick. 
So that stick there, um, it was picking it up and obviously the robot yeah, it came up and down here and it stopped and went back and went back and forward and stopped at this stick every single time. Uh, it then went around the other side and went back and forward and stopped at the stick. But about halfway through that session, it decided to just run over the stick. Um, that is really quite low to the ground. I was impressed that it actually saw it at all, to tell you the truth, uh, which means the camera system really does work quite well um, for it to actually be able to pick up on, uh, on such a small item like that and actually identify it as, a, as an issue. Uh, and then go around and again if you change the settings in there from being a completely flat lawn to a normal lawn like, like it's set at the moment to a to a rugged lawn then it'll actually always, i assume it'll it'll see you know, more, it'll be more sensitive on how it actually sees things on the lawn um the quality of the cut there uh, really is actually quite good um there's only this section over here that actually really did need mowing or had, had any any sort of any requirement to actually mow um, and it didn't seem to leave much. I think it's. I think it covered it pretty well. I'm. I'm pretty close to. Uh, very very close to 100%. Um, when it did its final border cut along this edge over here, it was actually it was actually a little bit better. Um, but look, all in all, um, the robot does a really really good job. Um, the the way it's set up, very very easy to set up. Um, as you sort of saw, there wasn't really too many, too many sort of tricks along the way. You just basically followed the app. Set it up on its on its area. Um, you know, set the schedule and away it goes. You got the added extra of the security function for it being a being a surveillance camera as well. I think that's really quite quite neat, and you can actually obviously see that from away from the house. Um, it's got the alarm setting on it, so if it goes outside its boundary, it's going to set the alarm off as well as notify you on your app. Um, the only difficulty we seem to actually come across at all with this whole setting was pure and simply just the uh, was just the Bluetooth uh, connection which I really am quite confident that's to do with my phone, not with anything else, so I'll, I'll work my way through that. Um, we'll get back to you uh, in, a, you know, in a couple of weeks to see how this is, how it's gone over the last couple of weeks, over a scheduled period, um, and we'll, um, we'll see how it all goes from there. So look, as always, um, if you've got any questions at all, uh, please email us at sales at Um If you have any if you want to look, look for any f further information on our website, just go to www.robotlawnmowers.com.au um, and you can check out all the little bits and snippets and things on our socials. Uh, go to Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, and uh, search for Robot Lawnmowers Australia. Thanks for watching.